Hey guys, so today I am going to talk about the interesting relationship and what we can learn from the MetaZoo and Rudy. Also MetaZoo and Open Boosters. They seem to have a relationship. So unlike, you know, the Flesh and Blood, I think the creators and the team of Flesh and Blood, they're in New Zealand. So it's hard for them to travel to the US right now. MetaZoo has done very well, surprisingly well. And the way that they've done it and their, their marketing is they have enrolled people like Rudy to promote their products. So their CEO, some high level executive, has like hours of videos with Rudy. And that's pretty clever. Uh, it's something that Wizard Coast would never do. Uh, when Rudy went to GP Las Vegas, I think he's only really been to one event. Like if somebody correct me if that's, in, that's wrong. But out of that one event, he was able to produce several hundred videos and they're pretty they're still some of his most watched videos so logically with the coach should have been hey we need rudy to come to our, our events we want to encourage rudy and tolarian and all these other people to come to our events and then maybe an exclusive deal or something and we'll sit down meryl will sit down so imagine you know the Meryl sitting down with Rudy and talking about Rudy's concerns and things. That is what MetaZoo did. So MetaZoo, give them credit. You know, I was not a, you know, I, I don't, I'm not investing in MetaZoo. I don't suggest you invest in MetaZoo. The prices are outrageous right now. But that being said, they did a very good job at CollectorCon where every vendor was encouraging little kids to gamble. MetaZoo had free. They had free packs. They had artists to do drawings and all so they've spent the money building up the game in the right way and one of the things they did is they i think they partnership with rudy i don't know i it would not surprise me if rudy owned part of the metazoo company the metazoo said you know what rudy we're going to give he has his own card he has his own promotional package um very similar to kickstarter would not surprise me at all if Rudy owned part of the MetaZoo company at this point in time because th that's what they did. Just like Flesh and Blood has a relationship with Tolarian Community College and therefore Tolarian Community College, Christine, they're always like a package deal, you know what I'm saying. They <laughs> come and, you know, you get Tolarian, then you get Christine, you get Christine, then you get Tolarian. So they're doing the Flesh and Blood event and at Las Vegas, I believe, I, it's like a very, I think there's like multiple of them. I'm, I don't really keep up with that. My point is Wizard of Coast had far more money dedicated to the NPL than they did to Tolarian or Rudy. And I don't really understand. I'm sure that Rudy does not receive free. I, I don't really understand like the EDAs, the, some of the most popular YouTube channels are sponsored by Ultra Pro. Like, why doesn't Wizard of Coast sponsor them? And then they can say, oh, you know, like, I mean, Wizard of Coast takes its content created. It's one of these crazy things. There used to be a called the Community Cup. And the Community Cup was basically just Aaron and her friends. And there was the same people over and over again, kind of like the MPL. It was the same entitled people over and over again. But these people didn't have any YouTube channel. Many of them didn't have a YouTube channel. So they don't have Twitter accounts because they had to self-delete Twitter accounts due to racist statements, but that's neither here nor there. But it, it didn't make any sense. At that point in time, MTG headquarters, you know, Jeremy Hambly of the Quarterling was the biggest channel and they never invited him to anything. <laughs> in fact, the one thing, this is how poorly he was treated. One day they hire a marketing agency. The marketing agency gives Jeremy like an uncommon and like uncommon to spoil. We're not talking about the Chase Mythic here. We're talking about like really, really bad cards. And then, so Jeremy does a funny skit and he, you know, he's not paid to do this promotion. None of the, I mean, Wizard Coast assumes, oh, well, you should be honored. You should be honored that we gave you this card to spoil. And some of the cards they give to spoil are to like nobodies. Like I watch this channel, it's got like 10 subscribers and it's just friends and families. It's nepotism. It is, you know, this hierarchy. What is it called? I'm trying to remember. It's not aristocracy, plutocracy, something like that. I'm not a history major. Where like the, the very small majority govern like who gives what card. So, so a marketing agency tasked with the uncommons and commons, you know, basically they gave all the mythics away to the Emmas and the 
Hueys and the Owen Turnewalds that turned out to be a disaster. The Saito that again turned out to be a disaster. Maybe Eric, I, I would not surprise me if the Bacini, Bacini got one either. So, okay, so they give these two cards for, you know, the biggest YouTuber at the time, maybe second to Tony. I don't know exactly when, but at one time, MTG headquarters was the biggest. And then he, so he does a video and he does a skit and he's promoting Uncommon, Uncommon. It's like basically random trash cards, right? And then Reddit goes after him. And Reddit's like, oh, you know, blah, 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 blah. And then, and then you got Wizard of Coast employees. I think his name was Gavin Vehe. I mean, there's a million of them. They all say the same dumb things, but, or I, I forget who it was, but there was a Wizard Coast employee who basically said, oh my gosh, I can't believe this happened. We apologize. Jeremy Hamble is a terrible human being. We hate him. Everyone in Wizard Coast hates him. I can't believe this happened. Like to Reddit, which then of course fanned the flames even more. And then Jeremy started, you know, acting differently and behaving because honestly, like if I were paying hundreds of thousands of dollars in the game, which Jeremy was at the time, I would be pissed off that this is how they treated me as not only a customer, but as a content creator who did what they basically told me to do for free. So the way that Wizard of Coast has treated popular content creators like Tolarian Community College and like um, Rudy, I mean, it does not make sense that Rudy does not want to go to a GP. The content was great for Magic, the content was great for Rudy, the content was great for Wizard of the Coast. It's far more viewed than their typical content, right? But instead, they spent $100 million on the lamest product I've ever seen in my life. Like, this is a product that at the peak, 100 people, concurrent viewers, would be on Twitch. Do they not know, like, hey, these people are dumb and they're lame and half of them don't even play Magic? I mean, okay, so I, I'll throw this out for you, right? Let's imagine that we have $100 million, so we get PewDiePie, we get Mr. Beast, we get Rudy, we get Tolarian, and they just play. It's just, we, we spend $100 million on whatever they want, and they just play, and every week they play, uh, like, a new deck and they have cards to spoil. That would work. That works. What they're currently doing is they're pushing these content creators away from Magic the Gathering into other areas. That's why Rudy produces, that's why Rudy loves MetaZoo and he loves Flesh and Blood so much because they treat him with respect that Wizard of the Coast has never done before or ever will. And the writing is in the wall. In fact, you know, if you ask Wizard of Coast employees, they probably say the same thing about Rudy they said about Jeremy back then, that they hate him. And I mean, this is their employees. This is like their spokespeople getting involved on a Reddit post saying that, you know, this guy's the worst thing that happened to Magic. So there was personal vendettas. I mean, this is a blanking customer. You know, I, I cannot, I have never seen a customer in any you know, even in Afghanistan treated this way. Because this is a paying customer who's making a video for the marketing company to give for free. And this is how you treat them. And I would say that Rudy has been treated as for given the fact that he's a content creator and he has X amount of subscribers. He's been treated very, very poorly and surprisingly bad, you know, by Wizard of the Coast. To the point, like he made that video, he's never going, even before COVID-19, he was never going to go to GPs. And he knows that that's a huge deal to him. Like he knows, and he's not dumb. He knows that those videos have more views than basically everything else. Come, they definitely have more views than Flesh and Blood. And all he ha would have to do is go to a GP for a weekend every month or Magic Fest, whatever it's called nowadays. And he would produce like a hundred videos and off it goes. Because people would want to buy expensive stuff and open it with Rudy. And I never understood, you know, why Wizard of Coast didn't take the initiative and just invite him kind of like an artist, give him a stipend, you know, give him some money, maybe give him some product, maybe give him, I don't know what he wants, but that's what MetaZoo did. That's what the MetaZoo CEO did. He sat there, he talked to Rudy. I'm sure Rudy got some product. I, I think Rudy has been on record saying that instead of being getting money for sponsorship, he wants it in product and he has a special card for himself. That's what every content creator really wants, right? They want a special Rudy card, which then they can sell for hundreds of thousands of dollars later on, I guess. 
So Wizard of the Coast has done a really bad job marketing. Um, they have done a very bad job choosing the content creators. Like, I, I'll be honest, like, Autumn is a nobody anymore. The NPL is gone and no one cares. In fact, the person who cares the least turns out to be Wizard of the Coast because they announced that no one should try to be a pro Magic player after creating a pro Magic scene, right? What's the NPL stand for? Magic Professional League. Wait, what? So why did you make a Magic Professional League three years and two years to three years into it, dissolve the league, and then tell people, oh, you can't be a pro? That is such a ran. That's such a crazy like change in attitude over a very short period of time. I could understand if you did it for ten years and spent a hundred million and the plan didn't work, but we're still in like the infancy of the Magic Pro League. My point is the Magic Pro League should have included people like Rudy, Tolarian, or you know, Mr. Beast or PewDiePie. That would get people to watch the thing. I mean, the fact that the Magic Pro League had 100 viewers and after they bought bots to view. It's so clear now when they were like, oh, there's millions of viewers. No, no, they were just bots. They were just bots that they bought. And it's so shameful they would do that, you know? It's so dumb too. The question is, okay, once you stop buying bots, who's going to see Autumn play? Answer is nobody. No one wants to see Autumn play. No one wants to see any of them play. Heck, half of them have mental health issues at any given time, so you can't even see them play if they wanted to. Like, they would have a mental health day that they need to take to get paid. You know, it's really weird. Like, would you ever... Let's say that you're running a business and these are your employees or vendors and half of them are on mental health days every single day and they still want to get paid. I would fire them all. And that's exactly what Wizard of the Coast did. It's a company. It doesn't, I mean, any company is going to realize, wow, these people are really terrible for my business. I need to stop paying them. And that's what they did. Hi, guys.